This morning, we are digging deep into the construction of tunnels. You've probably wondered how they do not collapse under so much weight. I think about that all the time when I go through tunnels. Fun fact, there are 570 highway tunnels in the U.S., but that's just for the big roads. When you add in smaller roads, trains, pedestrians, you name it, tunnels are all around. But how do they work and how are they built? Nehemiah Mabry has all the answers. He is a civil structural engineer who's also worked at NASA. He's also the CEO of STEM Media, which creates educational content for young professionals in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Good morning, Nehemiah. Good morning. Good I'm happy to be here. here. Yes. So happy to have NASA you NASA feels like the opposite of tunnels. It feels like, where well, we're going, we're not going to need tunnels. Yeah. It's just <laughs> wide open yeah. space. You'll be surprised. Yeah, until yeah. we fill up Mars, and then we need tunnels. Yeah, then we need exactly. a tunnel Mars. Yeah, right. exactly. Yeah. But that's for another day. Nehemiah, thanks for being here. So how how do tunnels work? How do they not collapse under all that weight? Well, listen, you know, first, I got a little a little, uh, a little demo for you yeah, all here, all right? Yeah. This is my slice of earth, right? You know, a lot of times tunnels need to go through water and everything. Yeah. But we have to start, Adriana, by making sure we understand what's in the ground, Okay. right? So what we do is we do a lot of geotechnical engineering. Let's determine how much of it is soft soil. You see the different colors here. How much of it is hard? What is the water content? Obviously, if we're in a city, we want to make sure we're avoiding some utilities and mm. gas lines and things like that. So first thing we have to do is just map and get an idea of what is the ground like? What is mm -hmm. it looking like before we even start digging? And then we, we dig in, right? So is this soft soil and then the darker is, like, is it harder to, to get through the soft soil or is the sand actually more dangerous? for? Well, it, okay. it varies, right? It has to do with the density. So you have sand, you have uh, highly saturated soil with a lot of water in it. Obviously, you have sometimes rock. This is, pretend like this in here is a rock and then that's where a lot of need to, you know, blast off the front cover of it. So it's really different. Uh, cases for every every project. But you said, all right, then we dig in. When I make a tunnel at the beach, yeah. you know, and you get your little hand comes out over here and you're like, wow, look at that. It collapses almost yeah. immediately. Yeah. Because the wet yeah. sand just goes, and also it seems to erode from underneath. Yeah. So how do you avoid that? Okay, so let me explain to you the underground technology, literally, right, that's involved in tunnels. So we use today what we call a tunnel boring machine, TBM for short. This is like a large, if you will, um, earthworm machine, right, that has a cutting face to it. And for, for demonstration purposes, I'm going to use this sort of rota rotating screw here. And what we do is allow it to do three major things at one time, right? It's amazing engineering. But as it begins to spin, the first thing it begins to do is obviously bore through or excavate the soil, right? Wow. And what I want to show you, as you see this coming out, yeah. that actually highlights the second thing that this thing has to do. And that is actually take all of the muck and the earth material and have a conveyor system that literally moves moves it off almost like There's an assembly a line belt? right behind the cutting face, Man. right? Wow. And then in addition to that, what's happening is as it is continuing to bore through the material, there is simultaneously wow. erectors for every few feet that is putting in a new rain of prefabricated tunnel lining, right, which allows it not to collapse. So oh, every wow. five, 10 feet or so, they're bringing it in and erecting. So this technology of this tunnel boring machine it's, it's a fascinating, it's fascinating. It's cutting through, it's boring through, it's removing the excess uh, soil and material, and it's actually lining the table or, or the tunnel as we go. And is every tunnel under a body of water going through the earth that's under the water, or do some of them actually go through the water? Through the water, that's a good question. So in most cases, if it's a deep tunnel, tunnel boring machines do go through the bed below the earth, below the water. But there are some cases, for instance, the Chesapeake Bay Bridge, which has a portion that was sort of floated out placed in the water and then eventually goes deeper into the water. But just purely submersible tunnels have yet to be uh, uh, accomplished or perfected. Does the, the boring machine start on earth level and then go into the earth or does it get, do you dig like an elevator for it and it goes down and then it just goes forward? Yeah, I wanted to answer this question because this is where explosives come in, right? So let's imagine <laughs> you are uh, you're off on the, uh, you're on the side of a mountain or something, you need to make sure that there's rock right, that creates sort of that initial staging place for the earth boring machine, for the tunnel boring machine. You, you put in a little bit of dynamite there, a little bit or whatever is necessary, blow off the side of this rock, and then there you can place your tunnel boring machine, which is start at a level that you can kind of access it and go deeper and deeper as you begin to uh, create and build your tunnel. So what about this world that we're living in now? I mean, with climate change, infrastructure seems to be uh, really challenge, being challenged to, to you know, it's... Things are falling apart. Yeah. There's a lot of investment in it. We have earthquakes. We have, you know, different types of weather. Are tunnels able to withstand all of these pressures, especially when they're, a lot of them are really old? Yeah, well, part of the engineering is to make sure that we think of all of the possible 
things that can happen, right? So emergency exits are very important. If you have any seismic natural disaster or even accidents inside the tunnel, escape routes that allow passengers to get out and sometimes go through a shaft to the surface. Other times they can go through tunnels, believe it or not, escape emergency tunnels. But in terms of even the ventilation, right? There is a need to keep the air flowing through. So you have ventilation stations to make sure high toxic gases don't hmm. build up inside the tunnel and, and uh, it doesn't become flammable or you don't have high humidity that yeah. breaks down the material. Uh, Nehemiah Mabry, CEO of STEM Media, I am enlightened. Thank you very much. Yeah, I got to say thank you all so much for your interest in this because most people think it's just boring. <laughs> well, it is. Uh -huh. It to. is. Well done. <laughs> well done. <laughs>